Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing a bibliobabble for Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. So just a quick side note for those of you who have watched my reading vlogs, then you guys know that I haven't done a review in a very long time because I didn't know what I wanted to call my reviews because I felt like just saying book review wasn't really cutting it and wasn't really getting across the excitement that these reviews had. So I was tossing around a few ideas and honestly, I'm not entirely sold on bibliobabble, which is what I decided on. Let me know if you guys like it. A lot of you guys did suggest book talk, which I do really like but I also would like to keep a little bit of originality because I know a lot of people are going to be like you're copying blah 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 so I feel like bibliobabble is fun to say as between that or book chat or book chit chat or book babble I don't know but getting into the actual review the format for this video remains the same so the first part is going to be spoiler free and then I will warn you when I'm going to go into a spoilery discussion but anyways let's actually start talking about this book so this book is coming out on Tuesday, August 29th, and honestly, I feel like as far as the summary goes, all you really need to know is that it's about Wonder Woman in her teenage years, and you can just go into it knowing that, but in case you do want a summary, it follows Diana, like I said, in her teenage years, and she is the princess of the Amazons, and she's still trying to kind of prove herself and find her own among her sisters in the Amazons. But when a mortal crash lands on the shores of her island, she feels compelled to save them, and she ends up saving her, but it ends up creating absolutely absolute chaos with everything else. So in order to try and fix her mistake, Diana ends up going with the mortal she saved, Elia, to the mortal world, and they end up on this crazy adventure trying to change the fate of the world. Now just to preface this review, I'm not huge into superheroes. I do really like them, I think they're super cool, but I don't really read comic books or graphic novels, I watch superhero movies very occasionally, so my only other encounter with Wonder Woman is through the recent movie, which I loved and it was amazing, but I know nothing else about Wonder Woman woman. So I can't really speak as a super fan. I'm someone who thinks Wonder Woman is really cool and awesome, but I've never really been like super into it. Now with that out of the way, you may recognize the name Lee Bardugo from other books such as the Six of Crows duology and the Grisha trilogy, which are amazing. She has made her way into my heart as one of my absolute favorite authors. She is just a master of dialogue. That's what really makes her stories for me. The witty rapport, it's just amazing and it feels so realistic. You just can't help but feel like the banter is actually happening. So she writes great novels about amazing groups of people. Like she's able to do not just a two people kind of back and forth conversation. She's able to do it between multiple people and it works. It feels so authentic. She's done that in all of her other books and this book was definitely no exception. It makes you fall in love with the characters because you just feel like they could actually be your best friends. And you honestly are like, I wish I was that quick-witted because I'm not. Honestly, they make me feel dumb. Lee Bardugo has just such a distinctive style and voice and another part of that is through her descriptions. Her descriptions are great. They're kind of just peppered throughout her perfectly. It's honestly like the perfect seasoning to this book and it made it like I was watching a movie. I could easily picture everything that was happening so it just felt like I was watching like a Wonder Woman prequel. Now I will admit I did have a couple of issues. For example, the multiple points of view got a little bit confusing sometimes. I had to kind of go back a couple sentences to see who was talking because it's not specifically written. Like in Six of Crows, if it's a chapter from Jesper or Inej, it says that over top. But this one, it's kind of more Sarah J Mass style where the point of view kind of changes throughout and it changes sporadically and I think that's something that could come with practice like really getting it so she did a good job of it but it wasn't as great as I would have liked. Another issue that I had is one that I've had in previous novels of hers and that is that the pacing was a little bit off. Sometimes it felt a little bit slow, it kind of dragged through the middle and frankly for a superhero book I didn't have as much action as I was expecting but there was kind of a reason for that so it didn't bug me so much but I was kind of expecting endless action. There was action at the start and then there was action at the end. There was a little bit of action through the middle but I just felt like it wasn't as much as I would expect. With superhero stories it's kind of non-stop action and this one had quite a few lulls in it. That being said though it was very much a quest narrative for Diana so it did kind of make sense. Now as far as the characters go, I did want to mention just how incredibly diverse this book is. The central cast of characters is almost entirely non-white characters. We have an Indian character, Brazilian, we have black main characters, and we have a lesbian main character. Like it's just so diverse and it was amazing. I was living for that. Now mostly I'm going to focus on Diana and Alaya because they are the two main main characters. That being said, I did adore Theo and Nim. I was just like, yes, the second they were introduced, I loved it. 
it. They added so much fun and such personality to the story and they really did shine. I loved them as side characters. They were great. Jason, on the other hand, never really won my heart. I was never a fan of him from the beginning. Now, Diana is just as I would have expected her to be with my very little knowledge of Wonder Woman. She was a powerful, strong character, but was still trying to find her footing. She has a desire for power, clearly, because she wants to prove herself to her Amazon sisters and really prove herself to herself, but she never lets that drive for power corrupt her, unlike other characters. I feel like Diana just has this unyielding sense of what's wrong and what's right, and she doesn't let what other people tell her dictate her actions. She's a little bit rash in that sense. She does what she wants, but she does what she thinks is going to... She's very utilitarian. So what I mean by that is she tries to make good for the greatest number of people. So she makes her decisions based on that. She knows that others might suffer, but she's trying to do the best that she can, if that makes any sense. But she does always strive for the best for everyone and try to find a solution that will work in everyone's favor. However, she's practical and she understands that that's not always an option. I think what makes her so compelling is that she maintains a level of humanity despite her upbringing. And like I said, I don't know a ton about her, but I think she was a very attainable character to readers. She's super, but she's not super because of her powers. She's super because of her ability to understand others and try and help others. So I think where her superpower really comes in is the fact that she is just a regular girl who doesn't need a man to save her. She's not a damsel in distress. She can hold her own just like every other girl. And I think what makes her superpower so amazing is the fact that she is just inspirational and that is what that superpower is. Because while Diana is an Amazon, she's also just a regular human being and that comes out in the fact that her and Aliyah are such similar characters. Aliyah is also struggling to find her identity and that is because of the oppression of her brother. Her brother really tries to shelter and protect her and in a very aggressive way. But despite that, she remains to be a strong character who doesn't shy away in the face of challenges. She kind of faces them head on and she also has that kind of utilitarian belief. So she's kind of self-sacrificing. She knows what is right and she knows what will help other people and she's willing to do it just like Diana. Aliyah and Diana honestly share so many similar characteristics that I couldn't help but feel like the message of this novel was that every girl is Wonder Woman, which is amazing. I love that message so much. So moving along to plot, this plot kind of lacks a romance, which was really cool. I liked the fact that romance wasn't the center of it. I was kind of hoping for a little bit of a lesbian romance in here, but I did like the fact that it kind of shied away from romance because the plot took the turn of having female friendship be the focus. It focused on how strong the bonds between females can be and how important they are. And it was just such girl power, which you would expect with this book. But that distinct focus on the importance of sister and really girls coming together rather than girl versus girl, just being there together and not trying to fight against each other was such a great message, especially for YA readers. The unification against oppression with these girls was great and I loved it so much. It was just girl power and they did still have a boy in there, but he wasn't helping them and he wasn't, well, he was helping them, but he wasn't like leading them by the hand and like saving the damsels in distress. They held their own. And I love the fact that this and other social justice issues were brought up in this novel, but they were kind Kind of woven in there seamlessly so you didn't feel like you were being bombarded by all this stuff. You just kind of got those messages and you were like, yeah, that is absolutely true. This book honestly reminded me so much of Rick Riordan's novels because it had the mythology woven in there and it had this focus on that as well as this focus on the group and friendship and how they can work together and just the conversation. It just felt like it was a Rick Riordan novel. But the incorporation of fantasy and mythology into the main plot made a very interesting clash of the two worlds and kind of seeing Diana and Elia on separate sides of that because Diana doesn't really understand the modern day world and she kind of pointed out a lot of the issues with it and how women are treated and all that stuff and there were so many funny moments with that because they're in New York City which is like the ultimate urban place and she's used to living on this beautiful tropical island so it was just really funny to see her try and navigate New York City as someone who 
has never even been in the mortal world before. Now this was the first time seeing Leigh Bardugo write in a contemporary setting. Normally she writes in fantasy settings, just entirely fantasy, but she described the scenes just as she would her fantasy scenes and I think it worked very well. So she was great at writing in contemporary setting just as she is with fantasy. Honestly, the characters are just what made this story for me. They're just this smart, sassy little squad that I was like, yes, I was just so on board with them and I was rooting for them the entire time and they all kind of just seemed like these underdogs coming together and really just being magical together. And ultimately it was a coming of age story for both Alaya and Diana and it followed the quest narrative which is very traditional but it worked for the story and it ended up being amazing. So overall, I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really loved it, loved the characters, loved the setting, loved all the writing, all that stuff. My only problem was the little bit of lack of action and the fact that it was a little bit slow throughout, but other than that, it was great. So that is all for the spoiler-free portion of this review. Now I'm going to be spoiling, so if you haven't read this yet, then do not watch, but if you have, continue watching so we can discuss it. <laughs> So first of all, when Diana saves Elia and then everything is going to crap and then she goes to visit the Oracle to get her quest, I was like, this is literally the first Percy Jackson book. But it's not only that, because that's a, just a very traditional start to quest narratives, but it worked for this story, like I kind of just said. But when she actually gets to the mortal world, I was just so in love with all the little funny things she said. Like the one was, is Google one of your gods? And I was like, basically, yes. Yeah. And really seeing Alaya try to understand Diana, like she's so skeptical of her because she's just this beautiful, like badass female that you're like, oh my god, what is happening? But then she calls her, what is it, anti-gun, horticulture, loving, survivalist, socialist cult. That's where she called, like, where she's from. I was dying laughing because it's not a lie. And then Diana gets the I love NY <laughs> t-shirt and this just like encompasses Diana, I feel like, because because she's like, it's a very strong statement. I don't, it's fine, but I don't know if it's true. Like, I don't love it yet. It's just, you can see the way that she's so analytical and serious about everything. It made me laugh a lot. But when the guy hits on her, that was like my favorite scene. I don't even know where it was because I don't think I wrote down the page number, but I was dying laughing at that scene. Maybe I can find it. Oh, on page 92 and they start hitting on her and then they call her bitchy because she's not into it and she's just just like, are you serious? And she like fights back at them. It was the funniest thing. I died laughing. I was like, this is amazing. And I wish I could do that because guys can be awful. Not all of them, but some of them can be awful. And it was just great to see Wonder Woman being like, are you serious? Like sit down, tiny little mortal. The scene where she goes into Dwayne Reed and she's like fondling the deodorants and like talking about how shiny everything is. Also just had me dying laughing. I loved all of the scenes where you saw kind of the meeting of the two worlds and the melding of them. It was just like the mingling of the two of them was so funny and I think it was so well done. Now the Warbringer concept, I, they mention it in the synopsis on the back of the book and I think that's kind of mentioning too much but I thought it was interesting the fact that she was the person who brought on all of this destruction and it's kind of just this endless chain of destruction and they have to end it. So I felt like it made sense that Diana felt so compelled to save Aliyah in the beginning. And Jason, I was skeptical of from the beginning. Like, I did not like him from the beginning. I was like, mm, something is weird about you. But when they're talking to him and I is like to him, I'm a walking talking apocalypse, but you draw the line at magical spring because he won't believe that they go to the spring. I mean, now it makes sense he didn't want to go because he knows like that will, he wants her to be the war bringer and like continue and destruction, blah, blah, blah. But it was just really funny in the moment. She's able to take such a terrible and dire situation and she really is making light of it. She's still staying true to her own personality, which I thought was just great. I also kind of like the fact that the Warbringer concept was weaved in with different well-known events, such as like World War One, World War Two. I thought that was really cool, but I felt like there were some holes in it, and I don't know if it's just me overthinking it, but I didn't really like the fact that it was like, oh, but there doesn't have to be a Warbringer necessarily for these things to happen. I don't know. That kind of bugged me a little bit, and I felt like that was 
is a little bit weird, but you know. When Nim was finally introduced, I was like, yes, 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 this is the character that we need because she just added such a fun element to the story with her like, she's talking to Diana and she's like, were you homeschooled under a rock? Like, cause she doesn't know about anything. And it was just the funniest thing cause like everyone else knows it was good dramatic irony and she just, her reactions to everything, priceless. I also love the part where Diana and Jason are exchanging their favorite stories and I think that it really was telling of their characters and who their characters ultimately ended up being. And I thought that was just very genius and just really clever ultimately. Now then when they jump out of the jet, I was like, well, now we have some action because we had the old attack scene and then it goes to the jumping out of the jet and that was like, oh my God, how? But I love the fact that we had Theo there and he just kept on saying, oh dang, like <laughs> it was just so funny. Especially when he said that when Diana lassos Jason after the attack because reasonably she's skeptical about him, but he still is able to kind of keep some secrets from her because he is awful. So you find out that Jason has the blood of the hero, but really the shining star of this was Theo and Nim and how they were like, I think they just get to Greece and they're like, we have olives and also olives. <laughs> and then she's asking, they were talking about eBay. I forget what they wanted to buy because I didn't write it down, but they're talking about eBay and Diana's like, off what coast is eBay? But then we have Diana and Jason and they're sitting outside and they kind of start this like tragic love story thing, blah, blah, blah. And then they go on a race, which I felt like was appropriate because that's kind of how the book started. But they're on this race and then they end up having this kiss scene, which was like cute, whatever. But I still didn't like him. I was like, no, and like for good reason. But Elia and Theo, I was rooting for because they're so cute. And the fact that she liked him, I was like, that was the relationship I wanted to see. And when they're talking about the love letter and Theo's like to Elia, in that dress you looked like buried treasure. I was like, oh my god, just kiss already, just please. And then there's another race scene, which once again I felt like was appropriate, but then you find out all the truth about Jason and that he's actually just a grade A dick. And then you get the final battle scene and you really get to discover Jason's true desires. And I love the fact that this battle scene was amazing. It was so well written, so good. And I loved, I think it was page 316, but Diana's talking about about mortals and I forget what she said. <laughs> Theo, on a scale of one to we're definitely gonna die, where would you put this? I forgot what she said, but keep in mind I'm quoting from the arc anyways, but she says something like, mortals don't cower or weep, they're courageous as always, and is just vouching for the power of humans to be powerful just like she is and just like Jason is as a supernatural being. But Jason is the opposite of Diana because he has let that power corrupt him. He has this thirst for endless power that she is able to suppress and doesn't really desire that much, but his has become completely corrupt. But Jason did make a great villain because he stood in for a lot of things and you never really suspect him as anything more than the overprotected brother. I, as much as I suspected that there was something going on with him, I didn't think that he would ultimately end up being the kind of main villain. But I thought it worked really well because ultimately he just wants to be number one and he's only really concerned for himself and he wants to have glory no matter what the cost really. But one of my absolute favorite lines was when Diana is coming back and like they think that she has had all the blood drained out of her and she is dead and Jason's like going away with his people but one of his people warns him, sir incoming hostile and Jason's like big guns or local law and he's like it's a girl sir and he's like girl and he's so confused. I love the fact that they like it was like this girl is coming and she is a badass and you should fear this girl. But the last 100 pages were probably my favorite part of the whole book because it really started to pick up and I loved after the battle you got to see the characters and how they came together and I just thought it was a really nice conclusion for a cast of characters that I honestly fell in love with. So this was amazing. I feel like the ending was kind of open-ended and it did leave a little bit of room for a sequel so maybe we'll get that. I don't really know but I hope we do. It'd be really cool because I think Lee Bardugo does a fantastic job with Diana. But that is all for today's review of Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!